Yo, what's up guys? A quick disclaimer, uh, this video will contain two parts. In the first one, we're going to talk about some quality of life things, which will drastically improve your gaming experience as a beginner. And the second part, we're going to talk about some basic but pretty essential information for you to understand. With that said, let's do it. Number one, bedrolls are your best friends. Find them or buy them, then add them to your skill bar. Now, every time when you click on them, before or after the fight, your entire team will restore their full HP. Click on this anchor icon next to the minimap. It will allow you to teleport to any waypoint you discovered in the past. It also teleports corpses of your fallen companions. I would highly recommend clicking on this trade button every time you encounter a new NPC. This is because in this game, you'll mostly acquire new spells and skills by buying them from NPCs. So try to memorize the location of those NPC vendors. Make sure to check on vendors after you reach level 4, 9, 13, and 16. You're gonna start seeing new skill books after those levels. NPC vendors refresh their inventory every hour or when you level up. If you don't want to waste your time on trading, then press shift while clicking on an item. So next time when you trade with a vendor, click on sale all wares button and those shift clicked items will be automatically put on the screen. Or you can also use it to split the stacks of items. If you found a vendor and you think you're going to trade with them a lot, then it's a good idea to improve their attitude towards you. Higher attitude will give you a permanent discount. Giving some of your items for free is the simplest and fastest way to do so. It is a good idea to put similar items in the banks, like scrolls in one bag, crafting stuff in another, and so on. Reason is, you will start noticing that your inventory turns into a mess the further you progress in the game. But for the love of everything good, do not turn on improved organization gift bag. Ever. These buttons right here will help you to search for items much faster. If you dislike when your skill bars are full of arrows and scrolls and other trash you picked up, then go to the menu, uncheck everything but add new skills. After you do some cleaning, your skill bars will look nice and tidy. Sometimes you can misclick and use a skill on a wrong target because characters are standing too close. To prevent that, you can click on the ability, then click on that character's icon on the initiative bar. Just make sure that the line of sight is good for projectile type skills like electric discharge or arrows because, you know, they can be blocked by objects like trees and statues or barrels or other characters. You can delay your turn by pressing this button. It's a very strong tool, so don't be shy to experiment with it. Also, you can detach your companions from your party. Simply click on a portrait and drag it to the side. You can prevent a neutral NPC from moving around. Simply start a dialogue. This will lock them in one position. It is very good for stealing and starting some fights. I would highly recommend to save earth, water, and other essences. Also any skulls, bones, stardust, and pixie dust. These ingredients are very valuable for crafting. You can also try to combine different skill books if you don't need them. And sometimes the result might surprise you. Another good recipe is combining any boots with nails. This will give you immunity to slipping on ice. Grenades are actually pretty heavy when you have a lot of them. Quality of life is done, now we move to pretty important stuff. Alright, first thing. In this game, all characters have an HP bar and two defense bars. Physical and magical armor. Second thing. Overwhelming number of crowd control or CC abilities like knockdown, stun, freeze, etc. are being applied only when either physical or magical armor is depleted. So read the description of the skill. As a result, characters who lose their armor most likely will suffer a lot. Or what is worse, they will lose their turn completely. And it doesn't actually matter how much HP you have if you're constantly denied in making turns. With these things in mind, you need to start seeing your physical and magical armor as your true health bars. Keeping them above zero is your priority in terms of survivability. But also the same goes for your enemies. This is why in general, trying to do both physical and magical damage with one character is a very risky and questionable choice, with a few exceptions. But it's most certain if it's your first playthrough. Having both physical and magical parties is okay though. It's when some characters focus on magical damage and some characters focus on physical damage. With that said, I don't want to lock you in a certain playstyle, so if it's fun and it's working, keep doing what you're doing. Pay attention to enemies' levels. If you've encountered a difficult fight, which you can't beat in a few attempts, then it's a good idea to come back there later and spend your time on exploration and talking to NPCs. Reason is, most of the time when you reach a new area or place in this game, you'll be rewarded with XP. 
On top of that, some places are really well hidden in a plain sight, and I've discovered a lot of areas, including this one, only during my second playthrough. So you get more gear, more skills, and then come back to that encounter later. Also, a good idea is to prepare the battlefield. You can set up oil or poison barrels beforehand, or you can separate your team by enchaining them from each other, and putting characters in good positions. Delaying the turn is also a very powerful tool. Majority of players who quit the game in Act 1 said that they screwed up their builds and they had no desire to restart the game, on which they spent a lot of time. I can assure you that there is a way to respect or retrain your characters through a magic mirror after Act 1. So try to find another approach in difficult fights in Act 1 and get to Act 2. But if the fights are becoming too difficult and you've tried everything you could and you have absolutely no enthusiasm to restart the game, then you can turn on a gift bag for Joy Magic Mirror. It will add this Respect Retraining Magic Mirror to Act 1. Keep in mind that it will turn off all achievements from then on. Use it only as a last resort and if you have no intentions to restart this long first playthrough and if you don't care about the achievements. It is always good to focus each character on a certain civil ability. There should always be a character who focuses on thievery. I would argue that Fevery is the most important civil ability in Act 1, not only it will give you access to new gear through lockpicking chests, but also, remember the tip about exploring instead of fighting? This is where Fevery is gonna shine, as it gives you access to certain areas much earlier. Another character can focus on Loremaster, which uh, you need to identify items or see information about an NPC in the fight. The higher Loremaster you have, the more information would be seen. By the way, most of the vendors can identify items for you, you just have to pay them for the service. Another character should focus on Lucky Charm, which gives you a chance to find an extra loot in most containers. So not only chests, but also barrels, bookshelves, etc. Lucky Charm is shared among all party members and single player. So even if your main character doesn't have Lucky Charm, he can still proc this if another companion has it. You can boost Lucky Charm temporarily by 2 points if you drink any alcohol. So stick up some booze, and drink it whenever you're in an area with a lot of containers. Some gear will give you extra points in those civil abilities, like these gloves for example. It's a good idea to keep those items in the bag and put them on when you need them. That's it for beginner stuff. If you want more Divinity related videos then let me know. I usually stream right here, so if you want to chat and talk about turn-based games and Divinity or whatever, you're more than welcome. If you made this far, thank you so much for your time. Don't forget to tell your friends, parents, cats, dogs, or whatever who play Divinity to like, sub, watch, recommend this video, or whatever YouTubers say. Thank you so much, take care.